Avengers Inc. issue number one. It's Avengers Incorporated time, everybody. That time of year where Al Ewing says, guess what, folks? Somebody at Marvel does want to do something with Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne. Last year, he did the Ant-Man and Wasp books. They were both really fun and incredible. I, I thought they were just like exactly what those specific characters needed. Hank and Janet aren't really in like the popular zeitgeist the way other counterparts of them are. So this was like a really cool thing to see a mini series for both characters. Janet Van Dyne, one of my favorite characters of Marvel, one of my favorite superheroes ever. I love Janet. I've always wanted her to have more screen time per se in the comic books because she rocks and there's so much you could explore if you just stay away from the things people perceive her to be. They reference that she named the Avengers every time she appears in a book, and that's fine, but when you move away from her connection to Hank, there's more character there to explore. Well, I guess the Wasp book sold good, because we're back with this book called Avengers Inc., which is just, what if we had a detective agency of Avengers now? Led by Janet Van Dyne. Almost like a book is solely curated for my specific interests, and that is... The best thing to ever happen. I really dig this book. As somebody who hasn't been enjoying the ongoing Avengers comic at the moment, this was such a nice, fun, creative, perfect Avengers story for me. This is my stuff. I love when Marvel just like reinvents a character, kind of, but not really because they can't reinvent a character, but it's so specifically a Janet Van Dyne story. Well, you could almost simultaneously put any other character in the role of Janet. It's very cool. I dig that a lot. So we open up this story and we're kind of like flashing back to the events that happened at the end of the Wasp book in the Wasp miniseries. If you haven't read it, Whirlwind, Whirlwind one of her more iconic villains, uh, was assassinated in his prison cell, David Cannon, and we don't know what happened to him, but this is the story where we follow up on what that was. So Janet is in the raft and she is with like some soldiers there and she's looking over the body just trying to figure out like what happened what was any of this there is a lot of classic noir narration in this story too where janet's taking the role of our lead detective i'm not gonna say all of it just because you get what happens in it it's very well done and it turns out that this guy wasn't the only villain that was assassinated. There's five other villains that were killed, including people like the Griffin and Quicksand. And it's just like, what just happened to all of these super beings? Somebody tried to target them, but nobody knew who it could be. They were all killed in their prison cell. Super crime for a superhero to solve. That's a great opening. You sold me on the concept alone that there's like a table with the body of Griffin on it and he's dead. I'm there. And then we cut to later that day, we're in the Jarvis we're in the Jarvis Lounge, which is one of my favorite new concepts that Janet came up with a very Janet thing to do, where she just made like, hey, if you're a superhero or a costume person, you can come here and chill. But the Avengers don't really use it now, but it's open to them. I can also take like private meetings in there, like the meeting I'm currently having with the mayor of New York City, Luke Cage. Hey, really cool to see somebody doing something with Luke Cage. It's a shame we never got that miniseries we were supposed to do with him. But he's here and he's talking to Janet because he's got like, something's going on in this city. I need to know what it is. I trust the superhero community, but you know, they're still kind of like outlawed in the city. I'm doing some good faith to get that back. But I need to know what's going on. And like, we've seen that, okay, we didn't see the corpses, but there's like audio, there's like audio footage that was like recorded of somebody saying justice is served now what is justice is served what does that mean it was one of like the catchphrases from scourge of the underworld which is just like hey it's an organization that's evil but we kind of disbanded them but maybe they're back either way there's somebody that's setting all of this up in motion to make it look like there's a big tactic in play we don't know what it is i'm the mayor of this city i can't have caution people working on this but janet you're very capable and this is very personal to you because the first one to die was david and he's one of your villains and i know you are capable of solving this thing would you work for me and figure this out so 
another book in which Luke Cage is asking a superhero character who was an Avenger to work for them because we had the Thunderbolts miniseries where Clint became the unofficial leader of a new Thunderbolts team. Now Janet's going to be working like the dark ops for Luke Cage, getting in on the ground floor, doing some grubby stuff, doing a detective thing for Luke Cage. We're setting up all the players in this little like band. It's so cool. She's like, yeah, I'll do it. I, you don't have to pay me, though. Like, I don't need to pay. Me. She's like, well, this is like for public interest. OK, like just take what the paycheck could be and it's going to be good. But just just know can't use costumes and the very notion of not using costumes has Jarvis shatter a glass like are you telling me Janet Van Dyne can't dress up because she is the best costumes ever and she's like we prepared for this Jarvis just get unlock wardrobe zero he's like I have an outfit he's like ma'am some of those fashions are months out of date and she's like fashion never goes out of style you're like oh that's it that one panel is exactly why I love this book because when you could just stop and relax and like actually have a moment to remember and appreciate that Janet Van Dyne is a fashion designer I support it and I love it I think that's really cool so now we're setting up more players because we're headed back to the prison which was the raft and we're going to the warden's office and the warden's clearly like a shady bloke and the idea is Janet wants to get a closer investigation of the corpses Maybe there's something that was missed that she can take a closer look at, figure out what it is. Of course, the warden's like, yeah, I'd love to know what this could have been. We have security measures for all this stuff, but if there's something I don't know going on, I'd like to know who fits the profile to be able to sneak in here. She's like, okay. So they go to investigate some of the corpses. She shrinks down when they're, like one of the soldiers is in there with her so she can take like a closer look at the bullet hole on David. And there's something a little bit peculiar about it. Just like the way like... It entered the skin. It didn't leave like a trace of burnt tissue, like a gunshot would be very hot. It feels almost cold. So what do you mean cold? What could that be? As she's investigating that, we see that the tray that held quicksand starts to move and the quicksand falls out. And suddenly, quicksand attacks. Yeah, and quicksand here to attack the guards. And this just turns into a fight. You know, when you're doing a detective story, you always have to have the little rumpus at the beginning where people start to fight. It turns out that once, like, Whirlwind died, <laughs> some of these other villains were like, we could fake our own death and we could get out of here. So that's what the rest of them did. That's what Quicksand did. That's what Griffin did. That's what Ice Master did. That's what Anaconda did. They were all faking their deaths. And at the same time, too, we see that Whirlwind starts to wake up something is happening to him what is it we don't really know but it's a different thing happening to him than the other people who fake their death so now it's janet van dyne fighting a couple of like d-list super villains and i'm here for it you know that's a very noir thing you just got a couple of the heavies who's heavier than the griffin who cares she's like well i'm outnumbered and i'm outgunned i don't know what's gonna happen to me i need a miracle and what happens is the body of whirlwind stands up its eyes are glowing and there's like a diamond in his head and it's shining a red light. And we're like, what's going on? This isn't normal. He's like, Dave, what's going on a few minutes? Like, I'm not Dave. My name's not David. I mean, I don't know what's happening, but I know I'm not David. And I don't much like for bullies. So this mysterious figure is going to help Janet take down some of these villains. And it's incredibly fun. You just get to watch Janet be very smart for a minute, which is really nice to see because she is an intellectual character and capable of doing a lot of stuff. She uses Ice Master against the quicksand and just like kind of easily uses brute force against the griffin. And you're like, yeah, this is kind of smart and it's chaotic, but it's also like very well done, very well inspired. It's awesome. This is just my stuff. Like, I, I mean, I don't have a bunch of like, nice things to say about the ongoing Avengers book right now but just when it's like here's like the Ashen Combine or whatever it's called and you got like these big otherworldly characters and this one's just like we're trapped in a room Janet's fighting a bunch of characters that are more powerful than her and suddenly a corpse turns into a vision and starts to team up with her it's pretty sick and I appreciate that and I love it then we see that we can handle all these characters. We take them down. They want to arrest the body of Whirlwind. But Janet's like, no, there's something up with him. What's going on with that? I don't know. And he's like, I don't know either. I don't know why I'm wearing this face. I'm seeing like flashes and glimpses of stuff. But I don't really understand it. And we see what 
this guy is seeing and it's like a weird bearded man experimenting on him we'll come back to that at the end here it's like i don't know what's going on but something's like there's like a big mystery here it's all fuzzy and fogged up i don't know what it is but my name's not canon it's shade it's vic shade victor shade baby remember victor shade no you don't well i i don't either <laughs> I know who he is. He was like the Vision character for a bit in like that era where he was doing the stuff. But where has he been? I don't know. Now he's back here. And immediately Janet goes back to the war and like, okay, the body of David Cannon, I want it back. Like you said, I'd be able to take it with me and have it released to me. I have all the paperwork from like the, the mayor's office. I want it back. I know it's a, like a walking corpse now. I need it so I can investigate what's going on here. You're like, what? No, I'm not going to give you why. He's like, just do it, okay? I have all the paperwork from the mayor. He's like, ugh. Ah, I'm not a big fan of that uh, Luke Cage guy, but screw it. If you want the body, take it. But if anything happens and I see him in a costume, we're done for, okay? So Janet gets to take home the body of Whirlwind, David Cannon, who is calling itself Victor Shade. And they're in the Jarvis Lounge, and now they're going to go solve crime. Or just figure out, like, who killed Whirlwind? What's going on? But it's also kind of, like, set up, like, we could do a case of the week. Because if you got a problem, just call the Jarvis Lounge and you can ask for Avengers Incorporated. And that's pretty cool. And who's the team we got here? You got Janet Van Dyne, you got Vic Shade, you got Luke Cage, and of course you got Jarvis, baby. This is it. The Dream Team. I love it. All these characters are from different eras of the Avengers, and they're doing something fun, and I appreciate that, and that's awesome. Like, okay, cool. Janet's got a case to solve. There's also more stuff she could do just in general to solve crimes, like, with the help of the mayor's office because it's legal for her to do it. Perfect. You think that's the end of the book, but no, folks. We go elsewhere, somewhere that day. And you see, like, an old doctor talking to Eric O'Grady in his, his classic Ant-Man, Eric O'Grady costume. It's like, we shouldn't have used Whirlwind. That was a stupid touch. It's dumb. Janet would never do that. Like, we can't have her involved with this. Everything we're doing, Janet can't know. And you're like, what? Who, Eric, who are you talking to? Who's this old crazy guy wearing a lab coat building a robotic ant? Oh, it's, it's Henry Pym. It's Hank Pym. Okay classic ant-man attire on for hank pym and there he is he's back and he's old michael douglas -y looking i guess so here's my thought on that just to wrap it up quickly i'm guessing because at the end of like the ant-man miniseries pymtron kind of went into like a vortex this is a different maybe older version of him that dealt with that issue and now he's back to michael douglas himself and to the mcu adjacent universe of the comics i don't know that's just my theory but yeah eric o'grady is working with an old hank pym and his ex-wife she's working for the mayor and we're having fun we're taking names and we're loving comic books what a fun issue with a story i'm curious and genuinely excited about I'd love to see more. I'll take more. So much fun. And the artwork just stays true to the tone of this book. The coloring is fantastic. Ugh, this is it. This is what I've wanted for a while now. This is my kind of Avengers shit. So Avengers Inc. issue number one. I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.